It is a joy to praise and worship the Lord Jesus Christ this Preparation Day, Friday. Today is July 17, 2020. I would like to welcome all of you to our broadcast today. And I'm reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, from the King James Version Bible. I would like to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the soon coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords, as the forces of evil, the Antichrist of the world, are closing in on their probation in time. The Christians must be ready for the greatest conflict. The mother of all Armageddons that is coming very, very soon. And that is the showdown between the forces of the good and the forces of the evil ones. And so, dearly beloved, I hope and pray that you decided today, because each and every one of us has to make that certain decision, has to convince ourselves from what is happening and from the prophecy of the Word of God to be on the side of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I hope and pray that that is your decision today because there are many who are still believing in the Holy Scripture so welcome all and I would like to praise God that today you remember to read a Bible to pray and to praise the Lord Jesus Christ as the weeks are approaching and the months are are ahead of us, we are still in an uncertain situation, dearly beloved, but it is comforting to know that the Holy Scriptures gives us this history, these recorded acts of Christ's apostles, how they preach and teach the Word of God and the persecutions that they have met during these times and history repeats itself. The Word of God still stands today and I would like to praise God and like to honor the Lord Jesus Christ for blessing, all, for blessing me and for blessing us. God is always good and He is good all the time. So dearly beloved, let us now Open our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 14. And I would like to read from the King James Version Bible. Verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. So during the time of of Paul and Barnabas and the other disciples and the apostles. They were preaching the, resur the resurrected Jesus Christ who ascended to heaven and Jesus Christ made a promise to them that He will come again. And until now, dearly beloved, I'm so excited that we are still waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And His word and His promises are indeed sure and true. Verse number two. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. So the unbeliever, unbeliever, the Jews that are among those people who were gathered together, they were stirring up hatred and opposition, evil according to the Holy Scripture against those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is playing out as well today, friends, because those who have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ are being steered into evil by those who are unbelievers, those who are agnostics, including the atheists and those who are unconvinced of the verity of the Holy Word of God. Verse number three, long time before, Long time, therefore, I mean, about they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of His grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. 
So there was this contention, there was this division in the city where the disciples and the apostles were preaching, including Paul and Barnabas. Verse number 5, And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, meaning to say there was this hostility friends and you could picture this out because we are not uh, unfamiliar with the scenes of rioting and the scenes of uh, of uh, hostility in this united states of america but during the time when they were preaching the truth about jesus christ there are people unbelievers who are steering the crowd against the apostles and against those who believe in the lord jesus christ therefore there were assault there were physical abuse and there were such huge uh rioting and and perhaps uh blood blood is spilled in the streets because of the preaching of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this was the hostility that the apostles were experiencing during this time. Verse number six. There they were aware they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lying round about. So these are still historical places mostly in the um, modern day Turkey and perhaps part of Greece the, where the Apostle Paul continued during that time his ministry on his first missionary journey his second and the third as well so we could we could see that these are the the uh, reactions of people to the preaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and verse number seven very short sentence very short verse here and there they preach the gospel meaning to say they continue to preach they escape from one city to another to preach the gospel I admire the passion the preaching of these apostles of Jesus Christ they do not uh, think about their comfort nor they they think about their convenience but they think about committing themselves to uh, their commission from God, the commission from God, I mean, to tell the world, to call people from repentance, to call people to acknowledge and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and call for the renewing of their minds and their hearts. This is what we need today. We need people who will call other people to repentance and to the knowledge and to the saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So this is what the apostles have been doing during these times and they preach the gospel. I have uh, premonitions and I have some predictions that we are going into more surprises when it in terms of the worsening conditions of our world you know and we know that we are going through the uh, the fulfillment of the Matthew 24 predictions of the Bible in intense and in fre and frequency are so they are so they are so audible that everyone right now are confused everybody is confused I mean of, of what will happen next. There are predictions that the stock market will collapse. There are predictions that there will be shooting wars with China and the United States of America. For now, there is this technological warfare, this AI uh, um, conflict, or I would say artificial intelligence warfare going on among the giants of nations and superpowers. And there is this uh, prediction, and I tend to agree that there will be sh food shortages and even water crisis that are coming. Water crisis that is coming. And so, friends, as we are going through the, uh, the messages of the Holy Scriptures, it is incumbent upon us to really be preparing for the worst. Expect the best, but preparing for the worst. And this is in connection to what the apostles were doing they were hoping that people 
would repent and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but they are being hunted down, assaulted, and even persecuted. And in fact, they are going through very rough times, and they are at the on the edge of their seats, so to speak, because they, they are taking the flight out of cities that are hostile against the message of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I have few friends who are telling me that it seems it is not safe to be in the United States anymore. Yes, it is not safe because of the race wars, nation against nation, ethnic against ethnic. There are discriminations all over the place. There are deep, deep hatred among uh, among the uh, races here in the United States of America. In fact, in my neighborhood, there are still um, there are still white supremacists here and there are confederate flags that are flying without any remorse or without any consideration for others who are in in this uh, city although I am in a state where there are so many diverse ethnic uh, groups here but you could feel the tension you could feel the the deep distrust you could feel the uh, the not only because of the pandemic but because of what is going on here in the United States of America and so friends we need to preach that's my point we need to teach that's my point Jesus Christ is our only hope there's no other hope friends I would like to tell you ladies and gentlemen in my going out I would I would go out just to get food or just to buy food and water that's it there's no other business for me going out except to do those things and it's not very pleasant to go out with a mask on and with the temperature of I mean the of course it's warm so warm here in the Southern California area but the temperature of deep distrust and confusion and so much anxiety among people and I don't know if if they are still um, if Jesus Christ is still relevant in in their lives maybe maybe there are there are people are still thinking about it but they mostly they're think, thinking about their survival their 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 salaries their 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 supplies so to speak friends when the apostles committed their lives for Jesus Christ, they are willing to be sent and be spent. And by faith, they move forward from city to city. And I don't know if I could still do that today or we could still copy that today. What we can do is right now in the, in the platforms that are available for us, the platforms in the social media, the platforms in, in, in other outlets, in other means we can use to preach and teach the Lord Jesus Christ because he's coming again and I believe it all my heart that we can contribute to the preaching of his word verse number eight and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent in his feet being crippled from his mother's womb and who never had walked the same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed so by listening to the words of Paul this impotent man seems to have faith in the words of the Apostle Paul friends Fear is gripping the hearts and minds of the people here in the United States of America and the rest of the world. Fear for the unknown. Fear because of what the media and the, and the manipulation of information is giving all of us. That, that fear factor. Our faith must be bigger than the fear mongers amongst us yes we need to respect and follow the safety and the health of other people yes we need to respect the authorities yes but if they go against the word of god we will disobey them and we will obey god in this case friends faith must be bigger than our fear faith in the healing that comes only from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ faith that comes only 
from a deep rooted relationship with Jesus Christ friends we are all afraid to catch or be infected by the COVID-19 we are so afraid for our loved ones who are vulnerable those who are sick those who are seniors and even those who are with pre-existing conditions and our children we are so afraid for them not so much probably for ourselves because we see from the media outlets the the excruciating experiences that those people are suffering right now in the hospital especially with this COVID-19 when their lungs are so much in distress and their immune system are malfunctioning friends ladies and gentlemen our faith in the Word of God means we need to be wise in what we eat and what we drink and how we deal with other people faith in the Word of God means we discern the times and we have the wisdom because we fear God not men and we are given this counsel to have faith in what God can do to protect us from this global pandemic and from this ongoing fear of famine, fear of earthquakes, fear of wars, fear of hatred, fear of persecution. Friends, our faith must be bigger when we hear the Word of God spoken. Verse number 10 said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Verse 11 And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laucanian, Laucania, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. So those pagans, those idolaters, those who do not know God, believe that the gods that they have been worshiping came down in the form of Paul and other apostles who made this declaration of healing to this impotent man since his birth. Impotent in a sense, he cannot move his feet. In other words, crippled from birth. He never walked, but now he's able to walk again. Friends, can we still believe in the miracles in this post-gospel era? Can we still believe that there is he healing when we hear the Word of God? I do believe, friends. In fact, I do believe in angels. In fact, I do believe that it's the angels of God are fighting our battles for us against the forces of demons today. And the forces of demons are riding out with men and women who have the agenda to destroy Christianity and to destroy our witness against their false idolatry and false religion. In fact, idolatry is so evil that, you know, it's a misnomer that I say it's a false idolatry. It's true idolatry. It's idolatry that is being pronounced by God that He hates the adultery of man friends ladies and gentlemen today people of God who are preparing not only for the Sabbath that will come but also preparing for your family and for yourselves I'd like to urge you to contemplate on the severity of what is happening around us I would like to uh, not only cause you to be alarmed because you're already alarmed when when the when people are fighting for tissues and toiletries when people are fighting for water during the past few months it may happen again it may happen again with severity and the consequences will be rioting and and so much worse and so much so much tragedy that is before us friends as the world is looking for an answer to their question it may not be for some of us that Jesus Christ is enough but I would like to tell you friends Jesus Christ is more than enough because the knowledge of Jesus Christ gives peace that surpasses all understanding 
I still believe in the United States that I embraced as my motherland. I still believe in the freedom, but there will be a time, according to the Bible, that this freedom will be taken from us and it's being eroded daily. And our only safeguard right now is for us to have deep faith that we are willing to give our lives for Jesus Christ because He is the truth and nothing else comes close to that truth. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, I still thank God for this uh, great uh, country of ours, the United States of America, for the freedom of religious observance and for freedom that even those who are satanic can worship freely and we who are Christians, who believe in the Messiah, can also preach and teach, but they are curtailing us. They are, they are trying to silence us, ladies and gentlemen. But the voice of God will be heard among the rocks and among the trees, if need be, because I believe in miracles. God is still in control. God is powerful. Friends, when they saw the miracle of Paul, they thought that the gods came down in human flesh. What a pity. What a sad reality. That's why Paul, and that's why Paul and Barnabas and the rest of the disciples continue to preach Jesus Christ. Verse number 12. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, their pagan gods, Jupiter and Mercurius. By the way, friends, by the way, Mercury and Jupiter are false gods, according to the Bible, but they are still being worshipped today with a different name. They call them St. Peter, and the others call them St. John, St. Barnabas, St. Augustine, St many other forms but these are the false gods that they rename according to the apostles name do not be deceived friends they called barnabas jupiter it is still happening now peter is called Mer mercury because he was the chief speaker then the priest of jupiter jupiter is the religion of the uh, Greeks and the uh, polytheistic culture, pluralistic culture during the time. And also in the uh, Hellenistic era, um, uh, absorbed by the Roman Empire or the Roman era. So they continue to worship with different names. They worship idolatry. And I happened to visit, when I was in Europe, um, one of the cathedrals there a mighty magnificent structure and i was surprised that uh, the painting on the altar seems to be like jupiter but they call him jesus oh friends do not be deceived turn away from the idols of this world especially from the griven image sculpting and painting made by the hands of men our faith should be bigger than those uh, made by human hands because the Word of God speaks against idolatry. Verse number 13, I'd like to continue. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. They were, they were so happy that their gods had answered their prayers for the healing of the crippled man in the form of Barnabas and Paul and they were ready to offer make them gods humans they would like to worship Paul and Barnabas and offer homages and and offerings and and money and and food and and, and privilege and pump and probably the key to the city Verse 14, this is the reply. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and run in among the people crying out. They rent, they tear their clothes, meaning to say they are ashamed of what, they have, of what the people are doing to them, of, of uh, assigning worship to, to them instead of knowing Jesus Christ, the Son 
of the living God. Verse 15, in saying, Sirs, why do ye do these things? Why do, why do ye these things? According to King James Version. We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Friends, as a preacher of Jesus Christ, we must not give glory to our human might and what our words could impact. Only glory be to Jesus Christ, the, the Son of the living God. This is what Paul and Barnabas were trying to make them understand. It's not because of their words or what they have performed that amazes the mob or the crowd. It's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. They continue to preach. The God who created the heavens, the earth, and the sea. The God who created the, the, the earth in six days and on the seventh day Sabbath. Saturday in our present time. Saturday in their time as well. Rested, blessed, and sanctified that day. And He is the Lord of the Sabbath. Whom Paul acknowledges and whom Barnabas acknowledges. They worship on the synagogues on the seventh day Sabbath Saturday. Without a doubt they continue. Verse 16. Speaking, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good, referring to Jesus Christ, and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness, the Word of God says. And when these things, and when these sayings, I mean, scars, restrain the, they, the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. Verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. He almost died, friends. Paul almost died. And Barnabas, because they were being stoned by the people. Verse number 20. How bet, as the disciples stood round about him, he arose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many and returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. Friends, when we are preaching Jesus Christ, we are either going to be bribed by the devil or we are going to be destroyed by the devil. Two things that will hinder our ministry and our preaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. Money, fame, and then if not, persecution. That and the other strategies of the devil are known. That's why today, friends, our churches are cowering, cowering. Where are the churches, I may ask? Where? They have been receiving federal loans and federal money. Where are the voice of conscience? Where? Gone. Gone with the wind because the states and the cities had extended loans and privileges to the churches, the church and state had slipped together in fornication, friends. But not all believe in what is the message of the church today. Many still believe in the pure ancient gospel of the Holy Scriptures today. That's why when I was uh, walking today, I was uh, contemplating what I will be speaking to God's people who are listening, even there are very few. I, I was thinking as I walk uh, with my uh, mask, of course, uh, with my uh, protective uh, clothing uh, on my neck, I was thinking 
why I still believe in the Holy Scriptures. Oh, it's because it's the sure Word of God. Why do I still believe in the principles of the Bible when majority of the people here seems to be liberated from the knowledge of the Bible? They don't even care of the Word of God. They don't even believe in the power of the Word of God today. Majority. But I still believe many are, are just silently believing in their own, in the comforts of their own home because they are afraid to go out of the closet of being a true Christian, of being the remnant. Friends, why I still believe because Christianity today makes perfect sense in terms of peace, joy, happiness. The world could never give us peace, joy, and happiness. No. In fact, we are so insecure even with all the, the gadgets to protect us. Gadgets to make us feel safe, but they are only making us feel safe. They can't make us safe. That's why our stress are so high. Stresses, stressors are, are high impact. Afraid that money will be running out soon. Afraid that food supplies will not be continuing soon. Afraid that our tap or our water sources may soon dry up. There is only one solution, friends. Faith in the acts of God. Faith in the acts of Jesus Christ. Faith in what Jesus Christ can do in this demonic times. Ladies and gentlemen, how is your faith? Are you continuing in faith? As you enter into the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says there must be tribulation. When the apostles Paul and Barnabas experienced tribulation as they preached to the Gentiles, to the pagans, to the idolaters, to the atheists, to the agnostics, there will be tribulations for us today. But praise be to God, our faith will conquer our fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse number 23. And when they have ordained them elders in every church and had prayed and had fasted, fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believe. Friends, this is the solution to our worries. This is the ultimate safeguard now as we preach and teach and commend others to the Lord Jesus Christ. And after they had passed throughout Pisidia and came to Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Athalia. They were busy, friends, busy walking, riding, drive. No, they did not drive. They were busy preaching Jesus Christ. And then sailed to Antioch from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how He had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. That is verse 28, the last verse of chapter 14. I would like to end that quote there. And I would like to encourage you, friends, as we approach, as we walk, as we ride, as we sail towards the promised land, along the way we we commend other peoples to the Lord Jesus Christ. Along the way, we preach the Lord Jesus Christ to other people. And along the way, we teach the Lord Jesus Christ to other people. And if they won't listen, we have done our part. We have done our share. And then we gather together at a time when gathering is discouraged because of this man-made virus, because of this malicious virus that had been unleashed by human beings against human beings against nation against the global community whether by deliberate action or by accidental action of releasing this covid-19 from bats which the bible which the bible forbid us to even touch 
and eat and just be near their enclave we are forbidden by the Bible it's clear there in the Bible but still man experimented so this is what it's happening millions of people are anxious if not billions millions and millions of people lost their jobs millions and millions of people are sick trillions and trillions of dollars wasted and destroyed economies are destroyed I mean because of this disobedience to the Word of God because of the agenda of the Antichrist few people who are in connivance in conspiracy the media wants us to believe that there is no conspiracy theory there is conspiracy friends you just don't know it because you you don't know what the Bible tells us or tells you it's you who don't know you who believe what the media is telling you they who are not even believers in the Word of God they who thinks they are think they are scientific in their ways they are all flawed human beings susceptible to lies and manipulation because of money corruption destroys this world friends the corrupt people in high places knows what is at stake here and so in the next few weeks they will roll out the vaccine with the caveat that they will be able to track your every move and even your body could be controlled remotely and especially your mind very scary but the Bible had already predicted the mark of the beast the 666 a long time ago and it's happening now the wonder the wonders of the devil's strategy is exposed and those who believe in the Word of God will take precaution they will gather together with testimony of how the Lord had blessed them how the Lord had healed them and how the Lord guided them to preach to all the world to shun to turn against idolatry to turn from their evil to turn men from evil towards the knowledge and faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ friends dearly beloved today I do not know what is your experience or what it is it is that you're going through you hear the word set the Christians apart and destroy Christianity and the people thrown topsy-turvy and on a in a messy situation the Word of God calls us to gather together in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to give testimonies of how good and faithful the Lord Jesus Christ to us friends turn against idolatry as we gather together may we encourage edify and bring more people to the fold of the truth For friends ladies and gentlemen I would like to encourage you today to not only pray but to fast and not only to fast but to meditate completely in the Word of God our only hope our only survival is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to save us regardless of what men the global elites the deep state the deep church the the intelligence community will do to our lives they can take our body but they cannot kill our spirit because it is God's spirit friends the judgment day is soon to come the Lord Jesus Christ will bring his reward with him soon believe this friends this is our only hope he will come again let us prepare let us be ready how do we prepare the Word of God tells us exactly how to prepare find meaning in your life filled with your hope filled with God's Holy Spirit fill your life with purpose food water shelter stay take charge of your health take charge of your family preach and teach the Lord Jesus Christ and obey his word the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us to obey and keep his word May the good Lord continue to bless you as we worship the Lord. 
this sunset here in this part of the world as we rest from our cares as we rest from our sins worldly sins and remember the holy day that the Lord had created for us to fellowship together with him long I long for that day when we will see Jesus face to face I'm praying for you all friends may God continue to bless you and keep you and may continue to hold on to the faith continually forevermore until Jesus Christ returns again amen and amen